you for a new day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, this morning, by the special grace and the mercies of God, we have met again, and we are going to briefly share the word of God. Amen. Um, I want us to read from the book of Genesis, chapter number 18, Genesis 18, starting from the verse 10. The Bible said, and he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and were stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah loved within herself, saying, After I am worst old, shall I have pleasure. My Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah love, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I love not, for, he shall be af for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst love. Amen. Well, last week I started sharing on the subject, Is anything too hard for the Lord? And this Tuesday morning, I intend to continue with that same message. And I believe that by the time we are done, somebody will be blessed. Amen. So I'm talking on the subject, like I said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, ladies and gentlemen, many of the time, the battles that we battle with in life are beyond the natural. Whenever you find yourself in a situation or in a condition or in a challenge where you have exhausted every energy and every finance and everything you know, where your connections have failed you, where your expertise has failed you, where um, who you know, the money you have, the certificate you have, and who you are in a society has failed you, then eventually it means that that battle is beyond the natural. And most of the time we come face to face with challenges in such conditions because most of the time we fail to involve God. Now when we fail to involve God who is the owner of this world, the Bible says that the Lord is the owner of this world. We have the prince of this world, but he is not the owner of this world. Now, because God is the creator, the Bible says that he created the world by his mouth, by the word of his mouth. And so he knows the depth or the in and the out of everything. Now, because God knows much and better than we know, it is better that everything that we do or every step that we take, we bring him in the equation. Now, when we fail to bring God in the equation, sometimes it makes things very difficult for us to be able to overcome because we don't know what it takes and how to overcome most of the things we face in life. For this matter, we need God's involvement in every decision and every step we take. Now, 
from the scripture we just read, it talks about a man and a woman who have been living for ages, for many decades, and were trusting the Lord for the fruit of the womb. And they couldn't have it because the Bible says that it was not the time appointed. Because the Bible said when the angels came to Abraham, they said to him, at the time appointed, Sarah thy wife. There is always a time appointed. And this is one of the understanding that we should have. That in everything there is a time. In everything there is a season. And when we fail to understand that there is time and seasons for everything, sometimes we rush and we find ourselves in challenges and in traps that we don't have to jump into. Now, the Bible said one day angels visited Abraham. And in conversation, they asked Abraham, where is your wife? And they said that we will go and shall return. And according to the plan of God, Sarah, your wife, will conceive. And the Bible said that Sarah loved. Um, she loved because... Abraham and Sarah had tried everything and has exhausted every energy. They have tried everything they believed in and it didn't work out. Until the visible and the evident or the practical presence of God visited them. When the presence of God visited them in the form of angels or in the form of men, the situation changed. Now, you cannot encounter God and remain the same. Every true encounter will leave a practical expression in your life. If you really encounter God, there will be a mark of expression in your life or in your body. And so, they said that we will go and by the time we are back, according to the time of life, Sarah, your wife will conceive ladies and gentlemen we also establish that in life there are things that are beyond the strength of men now every mortal man has a limit we all have a limit there's to, there is extent to which we can go and there's extent to which our strength can handle in the book of 2 Kings chapter 6 and the verse 27 talks about two women who had a meeting to eat their children. And the Bible said that one of them presented her child and they ate the child. On the next day, they saw the king passing by. And the other one said to the king, my lord, please help me. Help me. And the king looked at them and he laughed and said, how can I help you? If God does not help you, I cannot help you. Help is in the hands of God. Help is in the hands of God. That is why David said, I will lift up my eyes unto, hill, unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? Many a time, we look at the wrong places. We look at the wrong sources for help. So the king, who today represents the president or maybe the MP you know, or maybe the minister of state you know, or maybe that richest person or the uncle you know. And the king said, I cannot help you if God does not help you. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a stand to which even the president can intervene. There is a stand to which even the MP or the king in your land can go. The, to every mortal man, there is a limit. We cannot operate beyond our limit. And the only person who is not limited in any way is God. And therefore, we need God in conditions and in situations that are bigger and mightier than us. In conditions that our strength cannot handle. Many a time, we cast our eyes on mortal men. And by that, because they are men, they disappoint. And we become very much disappointed. But we have to lift up our eyes onto the hills. 
We must lift up our eyes unto God. We must focus on God. We must bring God on board. We must bring him in every step we take. And when we do that, there is nothing that is too hard for the Lord. When God is involved, nothing becomes too hard to overcome. In the book of Psalms and the chapter number 60, verse and the verse 11, the Bible said, David said, give us help from trouble. Deliver us from trouble. For vain is the help of man. Vain is the help of man. If you put your trust in men, you will be disappointed because there are things men cannot do. For vain is the help of man. Every man can help, but their help is limited. The help of a man is limited. The Bible furthermore states that curse is he who puts his trust. And the word curse means appointed to fail. And so when you, you put your trust in men, you will be disappointed or you will fail in life. But the only person you can trust, the only person you can rely on, the only faithful friend, the only faithful father you have in life is God. Now the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter number 21 and the verse 1 to 3 that the Bible said, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. Now God is not a man that he should lie. He is not the son of man that he should repent. As he say it, will he not do it? The Bible said, he watches over his word to perform it. And none of his word shall return to him void until it has accomplished its purpose. So God is faithful. And therefore, when he said that we shall return, he returned. If a man tells you I will return, the chances is that he may not be able to come. Because there are conditions that are beyond men. There are unforeseen circumstances that can hinder men. But when God said, I shall return, he came, according to the book of Genesis 21, verse 1 to 3, God or the angels visited Sarah again. And the Bible said, they visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. What he said, he did it. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. Who said that at your age you cannot conceive and deliver? At her old age, which looks so hard, it looks so unbelievable, it looks so impossible. But the Bible said at her old age, Sarah also conceived and bare Abraham a son. That would look so hard, that which looks so hard for men, that which looks so impossible for men, with God it is possible. There is nothing so hard for the Lord. And therefore Sarah, an old lady, at the age of 90, conceived and delivered a son or a man-child. Is anything too hard? For the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I came your way to tell you that if Sarah at the age of 90 could conceive and deliver without oppression, without induction, then your case is not too late. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. The other day, the Bible said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 27, God said, I am the God. Of all flesh is there anything too hard for the Lord I am the God for the unbeliever I am the God for all believers is there anything too hard for the Lord I am the God of all flesh I am the God of the mighty I am the God of the small I am the God of the poor I am the God of the rich I am the God of the healthy. I am the God of the sick. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? 
There is no complex condition the Lord cannot handle. There is no unyielding pressure that the Lord cannot handle. There is no unresisted or resistant pressure that the Lord cannot handle. There is nothing too difficult for the Lord to accomplish. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to break. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Ladies and gentlemen, I came your way this morning with the inspiration of the Most High God to tell you that there is nothing too hard for the Lord to do. There are things that look very impossible unto men, but not unto God. And ladies and gentlemen, you must also understand that everything and anything that has a beginning also has an end. And anything that has a beginning is temporal. Everything you, every condition you find yourself under today is temporal. Whatever challenge, whatever situation you find yourself today is temporal. Why? Because it has a beginning. Everything that has a beginning has an end. That is why God is all powerful. God is almighty. He is well able because he does not have a beginning and does not have an end. So God is not temporal. And so when God tells you I will do it, you must trust it. And this morning God is causing me to tell you that there is nothing too hard. There is nothing. Your condition is not too hard. That, that, that lawsuit, that court case is not too hard. That disease, that affliction is not too hard. There is no infirmity that God cannot heal. There is no condition that is above God. Oh, man of God, you don't understand. You don't know what I'm going through. Ladies and gentlemen, God is able. The Bible said, now God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ever ask or think. Above your, your, the limit or the scope of your, your thinking, God is able. He's able to raise the dead. He's able to open the blind eye. He's able to open that gate. God is able to cause you to travel. God is able to use you. With God, nothing shall be impossible. When God is involved, nothing is too hard. Yes, I understand. You have God. It doesn't mean you will not face challenges. You have God. It doesn't mean you will not go through turmoil. Ladies and gentlemen, the certificate for the believer, the certificate for the Christian, is not the, the, the certificate you acquire from school. It is your being through. The certificate you have acquired by what you have been through. What you have been through uh, 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 comes as, as, as a challenge. They come to build you. They come to fortify you. They come to, to empower you to be able to face every challenge in life. The Bible said there is no temptation that has taken you that is common. There is nothing that you are going through that is a special or that has never happened before what you are going through has happened and has happened and it will happen again but i want you to understand that there is a way of escape there is a way of escape from that hospital bed there is a way of escape from that debt there is a way of escape from that disgrace there's a way of escape from that name calling there is a name there is a gate of escape to every challenge you find yourself with god nothing nothing i see you coming from the prison it is possible you may be in condemned cells but it is possible you'll be walking tomorrow it is possible when you trust the lord Everything becomes possible in its appointed time. The God who was with the three Hebrew men. The three Hebrew men who were sent into the fire or were thrown into the fire. The Bible said, King Nebuchadnezzar screamed and said, Hey, lo, I see four men loosed in the fire. And the fourth one looks like God. The fourth man doesn't look like man. When God is involved, you can be in the midst of fire and still not be burned. Neither shall the flames kindle over you. 
you will not smell smoke because God is with you. For with God, nothing is too hard. Even in the midst of fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not burned. Is your case too hard than that? He brought water out of the rock. God knows how to quench your test. God knows how to give you life. God knows how to anoint you. Is anything too hard for the Lord? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He still the storms. Is there anything too hard? Now, he still the storms. Hallelujah! The Bible says that the other day Jesus, in the midst of his mission, said to his apostles, "Let's go to the other side." On their way going, uh, there was a mighty storm. But the Bible said Jesus was asleep in the sheep. And the apostles went to him and said, Master, carry us down not that we perish. And the Bible said Jesus arose and he rebuked the storms. He rebuked the wind. And the wind ceased. And there was calm. There is no storm blowing in your life. That the Lord cannot stop. For with God, nothing is too hard. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be watching me and you want to call through. Um, you can call me on 020 right now, 261 2251. You can call on 020 261 2251. You can also call on 020 261 2251. 020-261-2251 Let's know how the word of God has uplifted your spirit this morning Let us know how you have been motivated and encouraged this morning Let's know um, how the word of God is, is having effect and cause in your life Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? He made a way in the Red Sea. God knows how to make the way. God knows where the way is. God knows where to lead you. Now when you don't allow God to lead you, it becomes too hard. If you follow divine instructions and divine orders, you understand that sometimes it looks hard. But the end of it is full of jubilations and celebrations. Is anything too hard? I see God making a way for you. What is that thing that you are trusting the Lord for? And yet you don't know how to go about it. He making a way even in the Red Sea. Your case is not exception. God is making a way. God is making a way. God is making a way for you. Whatever you intend doing, whatever you intend to achieve in life, God can make a way. There is nothing too hard. There is nothing too hard. God can make that way. You want to become an EP? God can make that way. You want to become a minister? He knows how to open the door. You want to travel? He knows how to open the door. God can open that door. He is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to my father except through me he is the way he can make a way where there seems to be no way if he fed the five thousand with two loaves of fishes two loaves of uh, all right hello hello yeah hello All right, hello. Hello. 020-261-2251. You can call right now. 
one two two five one. You can also call zero two zero two six one two two five one. All right. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please, may we know uh, where you are calling from and your name? Me pacha ube ube tumi ama yehu baby a ufre free any udin. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Uh, please tell me. Me pacha say. Hello. Hello. Me pacha me tell unkan kasa. But uh, I feel uh, uh, the need to be able to join the engine. Me pacha kasa me tell you. Oh. 020 You can still call through and we'll pick your calls. God bless you. Me pacha ube to me afre 020. Alright. Hello? Hello? Me pacha udini baby a ufre free. Hello. Yeah, hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Me pacha udini baby a ufre fi. Me tawo nkapa kasa. Kasa fi nkoko. Nkoko, okay. Na me pacha ano pei? Kasa mi bi me kasa fi nkoko. Yo, yeah, that's the so same for me. But you would not. Oh, yeah, then you are me. Then you are me. You are me. Shrau, you are me. Shrau. Be be any one. You are me to me. Why? You are me. Shrau, pa. Me, but you have me number. Better to join. You are no friend. Me, you are Me, but you will to me. A friend. Zero two zero two six one two two five one. Zero two zero two six one two two five one. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Pacha Udini baby out for me. Good morning. Good morning. Chakosi, I'm speaking from Lancaster. Me pacha. Me pacha say. I'm Jacob. I'm speaking from Lincoln in the town. You are speaking from? I'm speaking from Central the Lincoln. I'm Jacob. All right, all right, sir. Please go ahead. I'm speaking from Lincoln Central region. Yes, yes. I can hear you clearly. Manca all right. Is Thank you. That that is fine as to. Uh, whatever we are doing, so that we have to get a certificate on that. So, not that we're going to school to say, but rather we are facing in order to come out with a certificate, either to enter into marriage as a certificate or to get some job as a certificate or to be healed of a wound or something like that. So, God bless you, one of those. Thank you. Jesus. God bless you too for calling. Thank you for your encouragement. God bless you. Yes, 020-261-2251. You can also call. Hallelujah. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. If he fed 5,000 people with two fishes and five loaves of bread, God will feed you. I'm telling you, God will feed you. There's nothing too hard. There's nothing to happen. All right. So God bless you so much. This is how we run up for today. Uh, I am Reverend Wellington, the lead pastor of Perfect Praise Chapel International. Um, you can also find me live on Facebook um, um, on PPCI Oil House. PPCI Oil House. 
or uh, Praise Wellington's Ministries or Praise Wellington on Facebook. You can also contact me on 0244-036969. You can contact me on 0244-036969. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face upon you and be gracious unto you. I call your coming out this morning blessed. And I declare that your returning home will be full of miracles and testimonies. You are favored in Jesus' mighty name. Bye-bye. Ima Noel, the only God who can stick to his own.